parking lots outside Milan Pushkar Stadium have been packed for hours in anticipation of the return of the backyard brawl to Morgantown for the first time since 2011. The Pitt Panthers have made the 75 mile trip south. They arrived ready to go to work with their helmets on right off the bus. The West Virginia Mountaineers completed their Mountaineer man trip with a rub of the coal, a nod to the hardworking and proud people of this state's coal industry. It's a blue collar rivalry that dates back to 1895 and it returned last year after a hiatus of more than a decade. The backyard brawl is officially back. They call it the backyard brawl. It's an opportunity to show the world who we are. They're here and they're screaming. It's you and your dreaming. Hey, how much you want it? Kick the living hell out of pit. Those thoughts are all muddy. It's you and your bloody. This is the backyard brawl. These teams hate each other. We don't like them and they don't like us. Sweet Caroline doesn't know country roads. Blue Ridge Mountains and Three River Oaks. Let's go, Mountaineers. Hell pit, hell pit. This feud is so rude, and one will submit. How about that for the Mountaineers? The Pitt Panthers have pulled a stunning upset. You have got to be kidding me. It's you looking down. His face wears a frown. This is a brawl of epic proportion by both teams. It's all goosebumps. This crowd right now is electric. Yes. Watch, I'm like that. Smear with no fear that dirty eye black. Know that your foe demands your attack. Snap and then scrap and their bones will crawl. Deploy and destroy. It's the backyard brawl. And it is the 106th edition. Welcome everybody to ESPN Saturday Night Football on ABC presented by Capital One. This is the Big 12 on ESPN as the West Virginia Mountaineers of the Big 12 Conference hosting the Pitt Panthers of the ACC. The weather almost heavenly here in Morgantown, West Virginia. Temperature near 70 degrees, a light breeze, perfect as these two rivals Renew the backyard brawl. Pitt won the toss and deferred. West Virginia will receive Sean McDonough with Greg McElroy and Molly McGrath. Delighted to have you with us. Ben Sauls will kick off for Pittsburgh. And Beanie Bishop Jr. back deep for West Virginia. And the backyard brawl is underway for the touchback. So here comes West Virginia on offense, led by Garrett Green, the junior quarterback from Tallahassee. First year is the full-time starter. He played behind JT Daniels last year. Started the last two games of last season. It is his team now, and Greg, a guy who can hurt you as much with his legs as he can with his throwing arm. He's an excellent deep ball thrower, still a work in progress on the intermediate and the underneath, but his legs and keeping plays alive, that's what makes him very dangerous. Not a big guy at 5'11, 202 pounds. They hand it off to Jalen Anderson, and he's dragged down after a gain of four. Taken down by Javon McIntyre. Neil Brown, the head coach, calls the plays for West Virginia with considerable help from the offensive coordinator, Chad Scott. C.J. Donaldson is the running back. They faked it to him in the pass deflected, intended for Cole Taylor. And batted out of the air by Dayon Hayes, the defensive end. It'll be third down and six. A lot of what Cincinnati had success against this pit defense last week was on the perimeter here a couple plays early you're already seeing West Virginia trying to attack the edges of this defense Pat Narduzzi's defense got off to a very slow start last week in their home loss to Cincinnati Bearcats had 10 points on the board six minutes in green given plenty of time by a good offensive line but his receiver went down and the pass was way off target Intended for Hudson Clement to look like he might have slipped down near the hash marks. Did have some contact from Marquez Williams. Quite a bit of contact there as you see the hand a little bit on the jersey, but good job there, kind of playing the play and a great job defensively by Pitt 
taken advantage of the errant throw and the slip by the receiver. Oliver Strahd a punt. There was some question whether he would. He got run into in their win against Duquesne last week, but he warmed up and looked fine. And the Australian hits a good punt. MJ Devonshire, the return man. One of the heroes of Pitt's win in the backyard brawl last year when he scored the game winning touchdown on an interception return with under three minutes to go. So here's Pittsburgh on offense with their first year starter, Phil Jerkovic. And we welcome our ABC audience to Morgantown, West Virginia for the 106th meeting in the backyard brawl. Penn and West Virginia, two schools separated by 75 miles. It was a three and out for West Virginia on the game's first possession. First play from scrimmage for Pitt is a run and a powerful run, nearly eight yards for Rodney Hammond Jr. Jakovic's the quarterback back in his hometown of Pittsburgh after two years at Notre Dame and three at Boston College. He's their starter and Greg McElroy off a very rough week last week against Cincinnati and a lot of people will look at the accuracy issues last week but the offensive line gave up a ton of penetration and a lot of pressures they had to play much better up front against West Virginia coaches say Jakovic was hit 21 times Hammond gets the first down Frank Signetti's the offensive coordinator he said one thing he needs to do better is get the ball more often to Rodney Hammond there's Signetti on the right of your screen Hammond had only 12 touches total in the first two games of the season and a lot of last week and the lack of touches by the running backs partly because they got so far behind in the game very important for Pitt to get off to a fast start to quiet this West Virginia crowd. They fell behind 10 nothing at home to Cincinnati in the first six minutes. Hammond again, Frank Signetti, true to his word, gets the ball again to the junior from Norfolk, Virginia, who was the MVP of the Sun Bowl. Their win against UCLA at the end of last season. Pittsburgh just 83 yards rushing. To your point, Greg, they were behind at 1.27 to 7 and had to fling it. Second down and seven. Hammond remains the running back. They have three backs they feel they can feature. Jakovic, for a big man, can run. He has the first down and he's across midfield. At 6'5, 235. He had a 23 yard touchdown run in their opener against Wofford. And if you look at the end of the line of scrimmage, Tieran Bradley. Running with that running back. As a result, Jerkovic gets that pole read. He takes it around the edge and a good job out in front by Bub Means, number zero, trying to secure the defensive back. But Bub Means, guy, they got to get going in the passing game as well on the perimeter. He's a transfer from Louisiana Tech. Came in highly touted. Has had just two catches. Plenty of room outside to the right. Hammond again. First down and much more inside the WVU 30 yard line tackled by Beanie Bishop. And there's not enough defenders on the right side of the offensive line. As you can see, West Virginia in a traditional 3 3 stack, they only have three defenders of the right side of the center. Well, for Pitt, they have three blockers, obviously, with the center, right guard, right tackle. That safety has to come up and fill, or else it's going to be a long night against this Pitt rushing attack. 16 yard gain already 29 yards rushing for Hammond. Hammond again. Powerful run inside the 20 against the West Virginia defense that has struggled to put it mildly. Last year they gave up just under 33 points per game for Neil Brown. They were 116th in the nation in scoring defense. Here on a second and one, two. You need to be very careful if you're West Virginia. Pitt's been running the ball very efficiently early, but here in a second and short situation is where I go with a hard play action and see if I can't slip the tight end, Gavin Bartholomew, out. This is where they like to target him on the field. Sebo Flemister now the running back, one of those three we mentioned. 
And he weaves his way for a first down and much more inside the 10. Good old fashioned Pittsburgh football. They love to run it. And they're playing power football to start the backyard brawl. And a nice job, too, by number 68, Blaze Zubovic. He's starting at left guard. He gets out around on the pole, and this offensive line without freshman B.J. Williams, he started last week, so they're starting Jason Collier at right guard and Zubovic at left guard. But in the instance in which they have an issue up front, Jake Cradle could slide out as well. Jason Collier, fifth-year senior, making his first start at guard. He's number 50. Here's Flemister on first and goal from the seven. Nothing doing that time. Fatorma Mulba in the middle of the defense. Hershey McLaurin up from his safety position. You see Asani Redwood, a redshirt freshman, seeing his first action of the season coming back from an offseason knee injury. They think he's going to be terrific. Yeah, he's got a chance to be really special. This is a deep group, a very active group. Not overly large up front along the defensive line, but they can beat you with quick movements and try to shoot gaps up front. Eight plays, all of them runs. You think Pat Narduzzi's trying to send a message? Here's Hammond. Bang down at the three-yard line. Tackled by Lee Koba, their leading tackler, as he was a year ago. Outstanding linebacker. Third down and goal. Six and a half minute drive on their almost a six and a half minute drive. Six minutes now. Up the middle and stopped Rodney Hammond for no gain. And Pat Narduzzi is going to send the field goal unit out on fourth and goal from the three. And a great job here by the front. Getting a lot of trash movement. You just allow Koba to just shoot right up the middle. Very sure tackler, so strong. And makes a big stop on third down. So here's Ben Sauls. One for two this year, returning kicker, had an excellent year last year. 20 out of 24, including five for five in the Sun Bowl. Set the Sun Bowl and pit record. The kick is good from 21. It's 3-0 Panthers. Welcome back to Morgantown, West Virginia. An impressive opening drive for Pittsburgh. They went 67 yards and kicked a short field goal. Sean McDonough, Greg McElroy, Greg, all 10 of those plays were runs. In a rivalry game marked by physicality, this history, that's quite a statement to open the night. I, I would say so. Clearly the challenge was received along the offensive line. A difficult week last week for that group collectively, especially in pass protection. Pat Narduzzi said we kind of had to go back to the drawing board just a little bit. Got to make practice more uncomfortable. Got to make practice more difficult. So I think they emphasized more physical play in practice, and clearly the first drive was a bit of a statement. Ben Sauls kicks off. This one is returnable from the six-yard line for Beanie Bishop, transfer from Minnesota. And he's down just shy of the 25. Here's Molly McGrath. Well, Sean, players on both sides of this rivalry agree. Backyard brawl week just feels different. West Virginia players watched the same video on repeat all week long, and in the video, Pitt players were waving them off the field after the loss, taunting them and talking trash. And players told us re-watching that video reminded them of the anger and disrespect they felt, saying we never want to feel that way again. And in Pittsburgh, the practice facility had country roads and uh, the Mountaineer fight song blasting to get them ready for this loud environment and pit traveled extra security personnel preparing for this hostile Morgantown night. Probably a good idea. C.J. Donaldson driving the pile. He made his debut for West Virginia in the backyard brawl. It was in the season opener last year, and he was a revelation as a true freshman. He ran for 125 and a touchdown on just seven carries. And he blocked a punt. As a matter of fact, his block punt set up his five-yard touchdown run. 
That game last year was the first backyard brawl since 2011 because of conference realignment. This rivalry went away, but it came back with a flourish last year. There were seven lead changes in Pittsburgh's 38 31 win. Garrett Green, probably a design run, trying to find some room as he follows the big right tackle, Doug Nestor, and nothing doing there. Just back and forth all night. And at the end of the game, the ball goes through the receiver's hands for West Virginia. MJ Devonshire will forever be remembered in this rivalry for the pick six that gave the Panthers the lead. The last ditch effort for Mountaineers came up short. That pass at the one was ruled incomplete. Here's third down and three. Donaldson powerfully ahead for the first down. He's 6'1, 238. And Green seemed to be limping prior to this play, and now he's slow to get up and favoring his right leg. Nico Marchiol is the backup warming up in a hurry near their sideline. Let's take a look as he goes down and see that right leg just kind of caught underneath them, and you see the immediate reaction. Look at that right ankle. As he's kind of rolled up there, and you see the grimace on his face, and he's able to walk off under his own power, but clearly favoring that right leg. And what a getting helped off. What a huge blow that would be. I mean, he's the heart and soul, and his legs really make this offense really make this offense difficult to defend. There's Nico Marchiol, redshirt freshman from Chandler, Arizona. Saw considerable action in their route of Duquesne last week. Went seven for 14 against the Dukes. Played in four career games, including both this season. And a couple last year when he redshirted. Donaldson has some running room. And he's tripped up by Javon McIntyre. In the absence of, of Garrett Green, it's going to put even more of an emphasis on C.J. Donaldson, who at 240 pounds, just such an effortless runner. He's got great speed, terrific, terrific back. And this offensive line anchored by Zach Frazier at center, one of the best in college football at his position. Neil Brown thinks he is the best center. And he is 37th career start. Mark Eol, he carried four times for 22 last week. Shane Simon, the middle linebacker, made the tackle. Their defensive captain, second year at Pitt after three at Notre Dame. That was a good read there by Simon. The defender chased the running back, which led Mark Eol to pull that ball, but Simon was right there. That was extremely well diagnosed and a good tackle in the open field. Third down and seven. They believe the offensive line is the strength of their team. They'll probably lean on the run game even more heavily without Garrett Green. Movement up front. There are flags down. Markiol deep down the sideline. More flags as he threw it in the direction of the speedy Hudson Clement with Marquez Williams in coverage. And DeAndre Jules putting heat on Markiol. Jeff Heiser is the referee. It's an ACC officiating crew, and now it looks like Green's limping to the locker room. Terrible news for West Virginia. Take a look at this pass interference that they called on Williams. A lot of contact there on the outside. You see, I mean, that's a good call by the official. And this is a pit defensive back group that wants to be extremely physical. Their defensive coordinator, Randy Bates, actually traveled to the officiating meeting just to see what you can get away with. And right there, obviously taking a little too far. 
Jaheim White, the running back, now a true freshman. Markiel's pass almost intercepted. Donovan McMillan went flying up, a transfer from Florida. And they play a lot of man to man coverage in their secondary. Randy Bates said, I just went to the officials' meeting in the summer. I want consistency. I want to know what's going to be allowed in terms of contact on the perimeter. There's Randy. And what's not? And I don't think he really was satisfied with the answers that he got either. <laughs> he said it's just very subjective. I mean, crew to crew and conference to conference. But they're going to take it all the way up to the line and maybe reel it back a little bit if they start getting flagged. E.J. Horton's in the game. He's a speedy wide receiver. They like to throw it deep to him. They throw it deep to him, and it's out of bounds. He was going to be their secret weapon tonight. He's a transfer from Marshall. He hasn't played in the first two games because he's been a little bit banged up. But Garrett Green told us he's the fastest person he's ever been around. The coaches say he has, on the GPS, been clocked at 23 miles per hour in practice. Consistently at 23 miles an hour, too. And against Pitt's defense, they're very aggressive with their safeties. They love to get those safeties up involved and run support. So having a speedster on the perimeter is a massive advantage when playing against a Pat Narduzzi coach defense. Well, they'll give you a chance to take some deep shots. Jalen Anderson on third down and 10. He got six, and now Neil Brown has a decision to make. Brown, by his own admission, on the hot seat in year five. And the heat got a little hotter last year in this backyard brawl game when he decided not to go for a fourth and one at the pit 48 late in the game. Punted them down to the eight. Was going to rely on his defense. It didn't work out. But he tends to go for it on fourth down a lot. And he's going for this one. These are the kind of games that could get coaches off the hot seat or at least the heat turned down with a win in the rivalry and that pass intended for Cole Taylor broken up by Shane Simon and the Panthers take over on downs leading three to nothing is Pitt with 309 to go in the opening quarter of the backyard brawl what's in your wallet a lot of close games in this rivalry the last three meetings here in Morgantown decided by a total of eight points of course West Virginia fans still trying to recover from the 2007 game when they were number two in the country and seemingly on their way to play for the national championship in Pitt. A 28 point underdog beat them 13 to 9. 3 0 Pittsburgh here. They just took over on downs. Their second possession about to begin. They had 10 plays on the first drive, all of them rushes, average 6.7 per carry. Phil Jerkovic, the quarterback, goes under center. They stick with the right side again, and it's Sebo Flemister. Another big run. There's a flag down across midfield. Lee Koba, another tackle for the Mountaineers. First down, hit. Flag on the play. Holding offense. And on the wide receiver, Bub Means. This is a good call. Look at Bub Means, number zero, out in front. He's got to hold that block forever. But as you can see, the right hand grabbing the jersey of Beanie Bishop. And the official from behind could tell very obviously that pulled that jersey just a little bit too long. And it results in a holding penalty. After a nice game. So it's first and eight. They hand it off. Chev Wabuko went in motion. And he got plastered by Trey Lathan, the red shirt freshman, who they think has a chance to be a star. Coaches have told them, we need you to be an outstanding player. They think he can be. I think he's got a really high ceiling, and him and Lee Koba are probably the best tandem that nobody really knows about in the Big 12. And 
Lathan at this point of his career, just scratching the surface of what he's ultimately going to become. He's got a lot of speed and does a good job in the open field. Lots of a yard on the play. Sebo Flemister remains the running back. Play fake to him. Jerkovic down in the flat. Donate Mumfield stopped short of the first down. The ball came out. Now Nears claiming it's their ball. Hershey McLaurin had it in his hands, but the officials rule Mumfield down. Let's take a look. You see that ball out away from Mumfield. Ooh. Man. I think that ball's wobbling around. That ball is definitely moving. But was that knee down before it was? You see the recovery there from West Virginia. This is one that they might need to take a look at. Remus Kazika is the replay official. Remus Kozaka, the replay review and the call on the field stands. It is not a fumble, Greg McElroy. Yeah, the ball moves a little bit, but he still has possession when that knee goes down. It was very close. They determined that the call would stand, not be confirmed. There just wasn't enough video evidence to overturn. So the play is a six yard pass. Jerkovic to Mumfield's the first completed pass by either team in this game. More than 13 and a half minutes in. Daniel Carter, the running back on third and three, and he doesn't get the first down. Comes up a yard short. Vitorma Mulba again in the middle of that defense. And Pat Narduzzi has the offense out there. They line up quickly. Jerkovic at 6-5. There's a flag. They stopped the play. It was illegal procedure against the Panthers. For the snap, ball start. Offense number four. Get Daniel Carter, who was running up to try to assist with the surge behind Dracovic. He's got a little bit of an early start and a big break there for West Virginia. Already three penalties against Pittsburgh. Here's Caleb Junko, the punter. Grandson of a longtime legendary assistant coach at Pitt. Staff member Bob Junko. And a good kick. If he gets the bounce, he did not. A little too much on it. 56 yard punt by Junko. Here's Kevin Nagandi. All right, thank you very much. First and ten, West Virginia, with the backup quarterback still out there. Nico Marchiol after Garrett Green, the starter. Looked like he suffered an ankle injury. He's gone to the dressing room. C.J. Donaldson, the ball carrier, and he got four. You see Marchiol, a guy that was really highly recruited. I mean, really throws the ball excellent, talented runner. Was an All-American, Army All-American, and a guy that was recruited by a bunch of folks. So this is a guy that, even though he's not the starter, he's very capable there under center for the Mountaineers. Was the Gatorade Player of the Year in Arizona out of Hamilton High School. 3-0 Pittsburgh. ESPN's presentation of college football on ABC will return after this message. And a word from our ABC stations. Aerial coverage provided by Goodyear celebrating the challenge of road games everywhere. Are you ready for the road? Goodyear. More driven. Gorgeous mid September night here in Morgantown, West Virginia. 63 degrees. Not a cloud in the sky for the sellout crowd of 60,000. 
West Virginia on offense just 29 yards of offense in that first quarter all of it on the ground they're 0 for 5 passing nifty run by C.J. Donaldson for a first down a moment ago Molly with Pat Narduzzi. Coach your first 10 plus plays were all runs what kind of identity do you want your offense to embody tonight. Well, We didn't get a chance to run it last week you know this week we got a chance to run it so you know we got to get it down when we're inside of three we got to put it in we didn't get it in so you know three points and then you know and again we got a quarterback sneak maybe going for a touchdown on fourth and one we got a little seizure so we got to clean that up. Thank you, Coach. Thanks. Well, veteran offensive line that did not play well last week in the loss to Cincinnati. Narduzzi wanted them to help set the tone right out of the gate, and they did. Nico Marchiol, the backup quarterback. Donaldson for five more. Molly? West Virginia quarterback Garrett Green received x-rays in the training room Sean and I'm told they saw nothing damaging enough to rule him out so they're quote trying to get him taped up and functional end quote Mountaineer staff tells me he is very tough and they're hopeful that he can return. That's obviously big news but knowing how his legs really feed the wolf of this Mountaineer offense you have to wonder if that right leg is going to limit his mobility are they better off just leaning with Markiel who has a moving right now and looking pretty comfortable early. They follow the tight end Taylor Lee blocker and Donaldson in the Pittsburgh territory Solomon to Shields made the tackle and you're going to see movement along the left side but I love so much how they get Cole Taylor the big six foot seven transfer from LSU he gets out in front it's almost like a lead with that tight end coming from the back side it's very difficult to account for defensively and West Virginia clearly has found something on the ground leaning on that terrific and veteran offensive line a combined 136 career starts Jalen Anderson gives Donaldson a breather. I think one of the things the fans here really appreciate too, the three best players on that line, the two tackles and the center Frazier are all homegrown West Virginians. They have years when they might not have three starters from this state on the entire team. It's a very small state of 1.8 million people. David Green is injured. Backup defensive tackle for Pitt, one of their captains. 3 nothing Pitt, West Virginia on the move when we come back. We meet next Saturday on ABC. That's Garrett Green in a room, it's a weight room, just below the stands in the end zone to our right, getting some treatment. They do have some exercise bikes in there if they want to have them jump on that and get it loose if they decide he's ready for that. Jalen Anderson to the Pittsburgh 40. Here's Molly McGrath. Well, Sean, I was just observing Garrett Green in their weight room stretching with athletic training staff. And at one point, he broke down sobbing and crying in frustration. And they were trying to comfort him, patting his back. So he's very frustrated right now. I'll keep you updated as I observe and learn more. But they have taken his helmet away, and they're walking back to the back of the training room. Well, it's a rivalry game. He's waited a while to be the starters. We said last year behind JT Daniels. and. Limping like that, it's unlikely he's going to be able to return. So, Greg, you can understand the tears. Uh, just sick for him. I mean, this is the game you circle all off season, a revenge game, so to speak. And it's cut short after just a couple plays. Just hate that for that young man. Hate that for his teammates as well. Oliver Straw to punt. Down in distance field position. If you had a fake, you might try it. He thought for a moment about something and then kicked it away and they're going to down it inside the two. Well done by West Virginia Malachi Ruffin down there to down it and they'll spot it at the one yard line. Look for a moment like he might do something other than punt. That's a huge play there for West Virginia as you can see the progressive pylon cam just excellent work there by Malachi Ruffin who's starting at corner tonight in place of Andrew Wilson Lamp. A nice play there on special teams to back up the Pitt Panthers. 
It is loud. These fans don't need the help. This is also a ridiculously loud public address system. So the veteran sixth year quarterback, Jakovic, trying to get the Panthers out of the hole here. And there's a flag down before the snap. Before the snap, ball start. Offense. First down. You can see right there, the end of line of scrimmage. They get Carter Johnson, who just flinched ever so slightly on this part of the field. Usually the offense is going to try to go on two because if you can draw them offside, you get a three, five yards. But if you jump offside, you lose half. So it's worth the risk offensively. Rodney Hammond, the running back. Dakovic powers it out near the three-yard line. Ooh, we talked to Pat Narduzzi about Dakovic, who's a newcomer to the program. One of the first things he talked about was his poise. Well, that'll be tested in this situation. Played a lot of football. Started the last three years at Boston College. He was not good last week. The fans at Pittsburgh started booing. And after the game, Jakovic said, if you're a grown man booing in that stadium, you have to look at yourself. It's pathetic. That brought more heat toward Jakovic on social media. Back in Western Pennsylvania, he was a record-setting quarterback in the Pittsburgh area in high school. Hammond stacked up a gain of a half yard, and that's it. Lance Dixon up from the secondary. the Mountaineer faithful Daniel Carter the running back he takes the handoff inside and gets smothered by Sean Martin their best defensive lineman they think he has NFL potential the junior from Bluefield West Virginia on the Virginia border and just a great job dragging down Carter in the backfield Sean Martin so disruptive big body and right there, he makes a huge play to force fourth down. Caleb Junko from deep in his own end zone. Preston Fox, the return man, makes a fair catch at the West Virginia 45. Good punt. 49 yards and no return. Frank Signetti Jr. He's called 17 plays, 16 of them rushes for Pitt. They have a 3 0 lead. He spent much of his childhood here in Morgantown, West Virginia, 12 years. He spent growing up here. His dad, Frank Sr., was the head coach here at West Virginia in the late 70s after a stint as Bobby Bowden's assistant coach when Bobby Bowden left to go to Florida State. Frank Signetti Sr. became the head coach. And young Frank has a souvenir from their last second win when he stormed the field as a young boy. They ripped down the goalposts after a 17 to 14 win. Frank lost his dad just about a year ago on the eve of their game last year against Pittsburgh, against Tennessee in Pittsburgh. And it was a very emotional return for him to Morgantown tonight, here for the first time since the passing of his dad. Play fake. And Markiol is sacked by Solomon DeShields. So they still haven't completed a pass. They're 0 for 5 passing. This was pregame. Frank Signetti, very proud of the fact that his dad helped build this stadium when he was the head coach here in the late 70s, along with the West Virginia government. 
circled the field twice, walked out to midfield, made a couple of phone calls, just reminiscing about his dad. Yeah, I can only imagine an emotional night for him and obviously a lot of proud moments here in this building. His dad went on to have a Hall of Fame career at IUP, Division II power up the road in Pennsylvania. Here's Cole Taylor, the first completed pass of the night for West Virginia. Each team has one completion now, nearly midway through the second quarter. That one goes for 13, still short of the first down. A nice design there by the offensive staff and a good call by Neil Brown. They've been running the ball so well between the tackles. You fake the run inside, you slip your big tight end out in the flat, and you make this third and manageable. Third down and four might be four down territory. As you said, Neil Brown goes for it a lot on fourth down. They have Taylor go across the formation again, leading the way for Jalen Anderson. And a first down for West Virginia at the pit 36. And you're going to see a defensive lineman kind of shoot across, kind of out of position, really takes himself out of position. And there's nobody there on the left side of the offensive line. This was a problem last week for Pitt. Their defensive line overly aggressive, and they got out of position, which resulted in some big plays for Cincinnati. That was 13 for West Virginia on the Anderson run. He stays in. It's down to the 33, taken down by Jimmy Scott, the redshirt freshman who was the man you pointed out. Was a little bit out of position on the last plays out of Cheektowaga, New York. They roll a lot of guys defensively. Pitt does as good a job as just about anybody, making sure they play five or six defensive ends, six or eight defensive tackles. They'll always have fresh bodies, but they have to be sound when their backups go in. Markiole handed it off to C.J. Donaldson. And he stopped by M.J. Devonshire. They were two of the standouts of last year's backyard brawl in Pittsburgh. Devonshire, the game-winning pick six with under three minutes to go. Broke a 31 all-time. 56-yard touchdown. On third and five. Markiole on target for a first down. Devin Carter. The transfer from NC State to the 16-yard line. It's a great job by Markiall. He's going to see this star defender, Lovelace. His eyes are in the backfield. As soon as he presents the ball into the running back's belly, he pulls it on the run pass option, throws a strike, and an excellent conversion for the backup quarterback. Now two for five passing. That one good for 15 yards. Five and a half to go in the half. Donaldson stopped after a one yard run. He was recruited as a wide receiver and a tight end, so it was a big surprise when, as a true freshman in his first game last year at Pitt, he had so much success running the football from the running back position. Timeout, Pittsburgh. Pat Narduzzi's defense on its heels here in the second quarter. Student sections around the country competing to be the Taco Bell Live My Student Section of the Year. Download the Taco Bell app to learn more. This one would have to be in contention. Big and boisterous. <laughs> I tell you what, I came downtown at about 8:45 a.m. this morning, and they were hydrating very, very well. This place is ready to roll tonight. It's a great environment. Good drive for. West Virginia, this will be the eighth play. Mark Eels two out of two. They missed the handoff and turn it over. He got crossed up with C.J. Donaldson, and Bam Brimma recovered the fumble. Snaps just a little bit to the right of Mark Eel. He never really was able to secure it, and as the back, Donaldson's going across, just never really has possession of the ball in what was a really well-executed drive, ends as a result of a stake. As you take a look at the defensive coordinator, Randy Bates, bailed out by a terrific job, Rima jumping on the ball. They handed it to him. Good timeout by Pat Narduzzi, tried to stop the momentum of West Virginia, and they did. Jerkovic, low throw and it's incomplete, intended for the fine tight end. 
Gavin Bartholomew. So much of the conversation centering around West Virginia the last couple weeks have been the issues in the secondary. And so far, they said that they would address it. Jordan Leslie's come under a lot of fire, the defensive coordinator. They clearly have altered their structure. They're much more aggressive. They're closer to the line of scrimmage. And as a result, the pit passing attack, even though they haven't tried it, there really hasn't been anything there for them to begin with. I'm a little surprised they haven't thrown it more, given it's been a few years now that West Virginia has struggled in pass defense. Jerkovic throws it up for grabs, and it's intercepted by that secondary. Aubrey Burks all the way back to the six-yard line. He's the best player in that back end all-conference second team a year ago. And you see them cloud to the field. It's extremely well covered and a terrible decision by Phil Jerkovic. He's a sixth year player. You cannot throw it late back across your body. It's going to be intercepted every time. Ooh. And as you see the hit being delivered there to Jerkovic as he was on the move. What a huge swing for the Mountaineers. Aubrey Burks, the junior from Auburndale, Florida, in the middle of the state in Polk County. His second career interception, he had one last season against Baylor. So an exchange of turnovers, the first two turnovers of the game. First and goal from the seven. Taylor, touchdown! Cole Taylor, they've been doing this all night long, but he has been blocking. Instead here, he releases out into the flats. And how about the job out in front, too, by Cortez Bram, locking up that corner and securing the edge as Taylor finds Pater. What a huge momentum swing for the Mountaineers. His first touchdown as a Mountaineer. He's in his first year here as a transfer from LSU. Neil Brown said he's by far the best receiving threat at tight end that he's had in his five years as head coach. The extra point is up and good from Michael Hayes and West Virginia takes advantage of the turnover. Aubrey Burks, the interception. Cole Taylor, the touchdown, seven to three. As we near halftime. PM with baseball tonight. Nico Marchio, probably a Diamondbacks fan from Chandler, Arizona. Just threw his second career touchdown pass. Seven yarder to Cole Taylor. West Virginia leads. The kickoff's a touchback, and here's Kevin. Ladies and gentlemen, Do you have any eligibility left? Uh, no, that expired a long time ago. And uh, I can assure you, even as bad as it was, I would be worse. On first down for Pitt, Daniel Carter spun down after a two-yard gain by Lee Koba. Garrett Green back on the sideline, the starting quarterback who left early. He has a boot on his right leg. During the TV timeout, he was talking at length to Nico Marchiol. Who was his backup? Markiol has completed his last three. You mentioned Markiol, a highly recruited quarterback out of Hamilton High in Arizona, the alma mater of Terrell Suggs. Carter again up the middle, very near a first down. Stopped by Anthony Wilson, a safety. First year as a transfer from Georgia Southern. 
you see these safeties, they're starting to really get nosy in the backfield. When you look at just the pass versus run chart, obviously they're off the charts in favor of their rushing attempts up to this point. But at some point, Frank Signetti has to go heavy play action and challenge this beat up secondary deep. There's a play fake. They're trying to set up a screen, and it's incomplete. I agree with you. I mean, when we talked to Frank Signetti yesterday, we said, you know, it's pretty much well known that weakness of West Virginia is the secondary. Last couple of years, among the worst in the country in pass defense, and yet they've only thrown four passes and really uh, nothing down the field. Yeah, and last week, I mean, they completed four passes in the first half of that game. I mean, Phil Jerkovic's going to have to finish with a bang to eclipse that mark as you can see the regression, the slow regression from number one in the country in 2020 to now down in the 100s, not been good in the back end. Quarterback draw, Jerkovic. Phil Jerkovic near another first down. They're going to mark him about a half yard short of the 45 yard line. Usually here on this third and short, it's a pretty simple plan. Jerkovic on a quarterback sneak, six foot five, 240 pounds. It's going to be really important for West Virginia to stay low if that's what they end up going with. They're 0 for 3 on third down. Now they've converted one. Pitt with two timeouts left. And West Virginia with all three. Panthers open with an easy win against Wofford. They'll be the only non power five team they play all year, 45 7. Then lost to a Cincinnati team. 27 21 the pit people were saying we didn't play well but Cincinnati is really good. Pit team that's won 20 games over the previous two seasons combined Rodney Hammond belted down after a gain of one. Tommy Duro Jaye made the tackle redshirt freshman from Philadelphia. Have to continue to wonder why are they not trying to use some type of quick passing attack? I mean, they've given up big plays downfield, but at some point you have to get Bub Means involved. He's your big body wide receiver lined up down here at the bottom. Got to get these wide receivers started. They stay on the ground and it's a loss. Hammond swung down by Fatorma Moba. Having a big game in the middle of that front three, a loss of three. And I'm telling you, man, Mulba is impressive. I mean, he's not a starter. He's a backup. But every time he's in the game, he seems to find his way into the opponent's backfield. Did it against Penn State. Obviously, an excellent offensive line. Did it last week against Duquesne. Doing it again tonight against a quality interior there for the Pitt Panthers. Third down and 12. The clock runs down to a minute to go in the half. Plenty of time, Jerkovic, and the catch is made. Bob Means involved in the action finally for a first down to the WVU 35, a gain of 20. That was an excellent throw there by Jerkovic. It's a good job, too, along the front, giving him plenty of time to allow that big inbreaker to develop. It's well thrown and a great catch to get Bob Means going in this ballgame. They targeted Means 11 times First, last week, and he did not have a catch. Since they started tracking seconds. targets in 2018, that's the most without a reception in FBS football. I mean, that's almost impossible. They throw it your way 11 times, and there are no completions. And that's just not going to cut it. But here he gets targeted. You see the ball right on target. Nice trajectory to allow Bub means to track it in and a good job of separating there by means against the secondary defender. Well, they lost Jared Wayne, their leading receiver from a year ago, more than a thousand yards. Matter of fact, last year they had a thousand yard rusher in Israel Bandicanda and a 1,000 yard receiver. Means is one of those guys the pit faithful are looking for to kind of help fill the void 
not much in the first two games and as you pointed out they need to get him going and as usual you were right <laughs> he's just so important when you have a big dynamic weapon that's playing your X receiver that can really help out not just your passing attack but your rushing attack too he's a guy that I think they thought would at times draw a safety help over the top which would obviously soften up coverage and allow you to run against more favorable looks. So he's, he's got a good come backup on. last year at 27 catches, particularly good in the Sun Bowl. And they're looking for more for him now in a lead role. Jerkovic given time. They brought pressure. Didn't get there. Day Day Reynolds, the intended receiver. And there is a flag down. Down at the 20 yard line along the near side. Malachi Ruffin, the coverage for West Virginia. Personal foul, face mask, defense, 15 yard penalty, first down. On Anthony Wilson, the safety. And you'll see him as he's working against Mumfield, the slot receiver. They're grabbing that face mask as Mumfield's about to cross face. Might have saved the touchdown, yes. but either way. First penalty assessed to West Virginia. Hit on the move at the 20. 33 seconds and two timeouts. Here's pressure right up the middle. Jakovic got it off. Carter was open, but they couldn't complete the pass. Trey Lathan came on a blitz and forced the quick throw. And this is a bust. They don't have anybody out in the flat for Daniel Carter. And my goodness, if you can just somehow find a way to complete that to the running back, I mean, he could moonwalk his way into the end zone, but the pressure forced Jerkovic to retreat and obviously made the throw off target. Well timed pressure by Jordan Leslie, the defensive coordinator. He has to be pleased with this first half performance. Looked like the left tackle moved, and they do stop the play. Prior to the snap, ball start. Offense, number 76. Five yard penalty. Second down. Matt Gonzalez, the fifth year senior, playing his 24th career start. He's one of their offensive captains out of Manorville, New York, on the eastern end of Long Island. Second and 15. They are in field goal range for Sauls, who has a good leg. Jakovic just two out of six after completing 31% last week. Steps out of the pocket, throws back across the middle. This time got away with it. The ball came out at the end, and they're waving it off as an incomplete pass. Mumfield couldn't hang on to it. The officials now conferring, and the call is an incomplete pass. Tyron Bradley in coverage. Good job by Bradley staying with it. As you can see, Mump just can't secure it as he's going to the ground. Big missed opportunity there. It certainly might be worthy of a closer look about whether or not it was a catch and then a fumble. Here's third down and 15. They're letting the play continue. Quick pop out wide to Reynolds. And he gets taken out of bounds. So it's fourth down, and the field goal team will come out. Let's go back to the previous play. Matt Austin, what do you think here? Uh, I think this is definitely an incomplete pass. I don't think he ever really had control. Uh, he didn't have control of his body. So if he goes to the ground, he's got to complete the catch. He didn't do it, so I think it's definitely an incomplete pass. All right. So here's Ben Sauls. And Neil Brown runs out to call a timeout. Second charge timeout. West Virginia. Try to freeze the seconds. kicker.
Kick off your week two NFL Sunday at 10 a.m. tomorrow morning with the countdown crew on ESPN and the app. They'll have all the early breaking stories, injury updates, previews of every game right up to the kickoff. And then cap week two with a Monday night football doubleheader starting at 7.15. The Saints are in Charlotte. That's on ESPN and ESPN Deportes. 8.15 on ABC. Cleveland and Pittsburgh. Right up the road. 75 miles from here at Ackershire Stadium. So it'll be a 36 yard try for Sauls. The hero of their Sun Bowl win. He made a 47 yarder with four seconds left to give them a two point win over UCLA. Part of his five for five performance in the Sun Bowl. Cam guesses the holder, and it is good. A couple of short field goals for Sauls tonight. That one from 36. He connected earlier from 21. So nine seconds to go in the half in a pitcher's duel here in Morgantown. Time for the Aflac trivia question. Aflac. Who was the last West Virginia player to start in four straight Pro Bowls? Man. I'm trying to think. You would think it'd have to come from it was such a great time in West Virginia football there in the 2000s. I mean, surely they had a guy that started at four straight Pro Bowls. Was that a hint? I, I don't. Well, 1952 to 55. Or Scott Johnson might be trying to steer us down the wrong path. <laughs> I will not take the bait. I'm. I'm going to assume there was someone on that team in the mid 2000s that went on to play in multiple Pro Bowls. Well, so many great players. At both of these programs. How about Pittsburgh? Ten former Pitt Panthers in the National Football League Hall of Fame. And the more to come soon. Larry Fitzgerald is not far off from his spot in Canton. I think he's a lock. You feel good uh, about Absolute yes. lock. <laughs> Probably in the first year. <laughs> Sauls bangs it out of the back of the end zone. Well, we heard from this gentleman earlier. And I'm proud to call him a friend. Ron Wolfley was a great special teams player for the Cardinals. It's the answer to the Aflac trivia question 1986 to 89. There's Wolf, who voiced <laughs> over our tees, wrote it, and voiced it. The history of the backyard brawl. What a great After guy. Play, now very popular. Unnecessary roughness. Receiving team number 97. Penalty is half the distance to the goal line. First down. It's Jalen Thornton, who, by the way, is the son of another one of the all-time greats at West Virginia, John Thornton, who played a decade in the NFL. But uh, Wolf, now a very popular talk show host, and is the color commentator on the Cardinals radio with the great Dave Pash, and one of the great guys. I love Wolf, man. Just He's a character. Awesome. What a voice. <laughs> oh, the best Distinctive voice. voice. Just a great voice, great dude, and obviously a great player. I would think this would be take a knee. Interesting that they go out of the shotgun rather than go under center. And neither team's going to stop it here. So Garrett Green, the starting quarterback, knocked out in the first quarter with a lower right leg injury. And Markiol solid in relief. Here's Molly McGrath. Aubrey, you had the play of the first half. What did you see in that momentum swinging interception? Um, QB scrumming out the pocket, um, just plastered on my man. Um, seeing the ball thrown, I um, broke on my break and went to go get the ball. It's been hard for them to throw the ball all night. What kind of statement is your secondary making here? Um, we just want to prove to ourselves had a rough two weeks um, coming out. So just trying to prove to ourselves, show, show West Virginia that we're here to play ball. All right, thanks, Aubrey. Thank you much. Sean. Well, Aubrey told us. Yesterday takes the failures of the secondary personally. The entire unit does. He thinks they're capable of much better. So far, so good. They're up by one at the half. The Dish Halftime Report after this message and a word from our ABC station. The backyard brawl is officially back. They call it the backyard brawl. It's an opportunity to show the world who we are. 
They're here and they're screaming. It's you and your dreaming. Hey, how much you want it? Kick the living hell out of Pitt. Those thoughts are all muddy. It's you and your bloody. This is the backyard brawl. These teams hate each other. We don't like them and they don't like us. Sweet Caroline doesn't know country roads. Blue Ridge Mountains and Three River Roads. Let's go, Mountaineers. Hell pit, hell pit. This feud is so rude, and one will submit. How about that for the Mountaineers? The Pitt Panthers have pulled a stunning upset. You have got to be kidding me. It's you looking down. His face wears a frown. This is a brawl of epic proportion by both teams. All goosebumps. This crowd right now is electric. Just watch. I'm like that. Smear with no fear that dirty eye black. Know that your foe demands your attack. Snap and then scrap, and their bones will crawl. Deploy and destroy. It's the backyard brawl. The 106th edition dating back to 1895. It's Saturday Night Football on ABC, presented by Capital One. This is the Big 12 on ESPN. West Virginia of the Big 12 leading Pittsburgh from the ACC 7 to 6 as we get ready for the start of the second half. Sean McDonough, Greg McElroy, and Molly McGrath. West Virginia to kick off. Michael Hayes to boot it away. Kenny Johnson back deep for the kickoff. And it is returnable, and they'll try it. And Johnson upended at the 20-yard line. Well, you heard the words of Ron Wolfley about the backyard brawl. It is physical, and really, the tone said early when a pit on its first drive ran the ball 10 times with no passes and kicked a field goal. Uh, there have only been eight passes by each team in this game. There have been 43 runs combined. It's really all about both offensive and defensive lines. I mean, this is a scrum up front for both these groups, and it really has, at some point, got to shift back to the passing attack for both because they've been largely unchallenged with both secondaries. Will they open it up? Good fake by Jakovic, and he rumbles across the boundary, taken across by Beanie Bishop. Here's Molly McGrath. Well, Sean, you saw West Virginia quarterback Garrett Green in street clothes after suffering an apparent right ankle injury in the first half. Their head coach, Neil Brown, confirmed that he is out for the rest of the game, but said they have full faith in Nico Marchial. He told him in the locker room, you just need to take a deep breath. You've been here before. You've won games that you've come into, like the Oklahoma State game. And he says, you're just going to need to make some plays in the second half. And he told his team, they call this a brawl for a reason. This game will come down to who is more physical and who can run the ball better in the second half. Sean. All right, Molly, thank you. Rodney Hammond slides ahead. Got within a yard of the first down. And to Molly's report, Greg, it does seem like the backyard brawl is not too big for young Nico Marchiol. He's definitely gotten more comfortable as the game went along. But really, if you look at most of his passes and his accuracy, I mean, he hasn't really missed. I mean, there have been some good defensive plays. So both quarterbacks kind of settled in as the second half, or as the first half came to a close. And see, either one has a little fire here in the second half. Third down and one. Right back to the ground game to open up the second half for Pittsburgh. Hammond dropped for a loss. Mike Lockhart. And just a great job by Lockhart. You're going to see him squeeze right around the right guard. That's Collier, mm. who just misses him, and he makes a big play on third and short in the backfield. Yeah, Collier is the new starter, first career start as a fifth year senior, B.J. Williams. True freshman was going to start at guard, but he got dinged up during the week. We believe it was a concussion. Here's the punt by Junko. Returnable. Preston Fox got stood up and driven back at the 39 yard line. Dylan Bennett, the tackle. Let's take a look at tonight's Mark of a Fighter moment brought to you by Modelo. 
I mean, who else? The big fella, Cole Taylor, the transfer from LSU, really getting it done both on the ground here as you see him pull across, cleaning it up a little bit. This is a play they had a lot of success with, and then here's the change up off of it. Same motion across the line of scrimmage, but he slips into the flat, and he finds Pater for the game's only touchdown. He was big in the first half and has to continue to step up here in the second. Transfer from LSU. Here's C.J. Donaldson stopped just shy of the 45-yard line. First play of the second half for West Virginia. Dayon Hayes in on the stop. Help from Brandon George. Nico Marchio, the quarterback, three for six in the first half, completed his last three, including that touchdown pass to Cole Taylor Donaldson the running back they're going to continue these two teams he just keeps slugging it out on the ground Donaldson got a first down before he got stacked up at the pit 48 just an excellent job here from West Virginia's offensive line, the right side, Doug Nestor, six foot seven, 320 pounds, and Zach Frazier, the outstanding center. They're really doing an excellent job neutralizing what is a very active front. Brandon Yates is the right guard. All three of those gentlemen, center, right guard, right tackle, are married. They each got married this spring. Jalen Davis went in motion. Donaldson chopped down by Donovan McMillan, or that might have gone a long way. It went to the 40. It'll be third down and two. And just great action here, similar to what they worked with earlier in the ball game. This is just counteraction, though, where they bring two tight ends across. You got Cole Taylor, number 87, and Traylon Davis, number 81, really washing it out and setting up a second and short. Yes, I said third and two. It's second and two. Another good night for Donaldson, averaging more than six yards per carry. Played seven games last year and then missed the rest of the season with a lower leg injury. Jalen Anderson stopped short of the first down. Well played by Shane Simon. Brandon George there as well. Here's third down in a yard. Four and a half gone by, second half. Given the way things went last year in this ball game, obviously it's not late in the game like it was, but gotta be thinking four down territory for West Virginia. So anticipate another run up inside. If they can't get the surge, I would imagine they'll go for it in a short yarded situation. Anderson running laterally and they chop him down short of the first down. Van Brema Marquez Williams there for Pitt. And they are going to go for it on fourth down. And uh, Donaldson wants to get back in there. You think he'd be better in this situation? 240 pounds. He should be your short yardage back. I'm surprised they ran uh, Anderson. Sideways, Marchiol, the keeper. Yeah, it looks like he has it. He's 6 1, 2, 24. He has the first down. And here comes Donaldson back in. Tanner recruited by accident. He was at Gulver Prep in Florida. West Virginia and a lot of other schools were recruiting his teammate, Trey Lathan, the linebacker who's here now at West Virginia. But they got glimpses of Donaldson. On some of the highlight tapes, the wide receiver and a tight end now an excellent running back. Just moves so effortlessly for a guy that's nearly 240 pounds. Man, he doesn't run like it, that's for sure, but still has that power of a big back. And Speedster Horton in the game again, the top of your screen. They looked in that direction, but he got flushed and sacked. Shane Simon, the fifth year senior out of West Orange, New Jersey, a loss of nine. This is a great call defensively. You're going to see double pressure off the left-hand side of Marchio. There's only one blocker for those two blitzers, and Simon's the one that's unblocked. Marchio's got to understand that ball has to come out. That's hot. 
He doesn't. He's dropped for a sack. After the play fake, Marky Ole might have been hit on the throw. Tried to get it to Hudson Clement. And there is a flag down. MJ Devonshire had the coverage. And Devin Danielson, Holy defensive tackle. Defense, number 12, 10 yard penalty. Automatic first down. Is still on the field. Devin Shire, last year's hero with the game winning pick six, called for the penalty. 8.09 to go, third quarter. West Virginia, 7 to 6. Aerial coverage provided by Goodyear. Road tested and game ready. Are you ready for the road? Goodyear more driven. Gorgeous night here in Morgantown, 59 degrees, clear skies. Pat Narduzzi not happy about this holding call. Yeah, and as you see, Devonshire is working against Hudson Clement, last week's star. You can't really tell whether or not he's got a grab of his jersey, but clearly Pat Narduzzi very upset with the official, especially after having West Virginia in second long after the first down sack to give up a free first down on a play that didn't look too aggressive. It's got to be very frustrating for the pit head coach. Now in his ninth year, second all-time in wins at Pittsburgh at 63. Behind only the legendary Jock Sutherland, coach back in the 20s and 30s. 111 wins for him. Donaldson slithers down to the 30-yard line. Solomon DeShields, another tackle for the Panthers. West Virginia just continues to have success right into the heart of this Pitt defense. This is a group that really ran the ball well against Pitt last year in the game, but man, it's not often when you see Pitt just getting gashed in the run game consistently four, five, six yards at a time. It's very uncharacteristic, but it's a young group with a lot of new faces that are still clearly trying to find themselves. Neither team has thrown a pass in the third quarter, which is halfway through. Donaldson. Running left. First down. They think Frazier's their best lineman in the center, but Wyatt Milam, in the words of Neil Brown, is elite. The left tackle at 6'6, 312 pounds. Just an excellent job there engaging with Deion Hayes. That's good on good there, with the defensive end and the tackle. Markiel took it back, fired a bullet to Hudson Clement. And a first down on the quick slant for a 10-yard gain. Clement, a revelation last week as Neil Brown said, nobody in the country had a better week than Clement. Last week against Duquesne, five catches, 177 yards, and three touchdowns. And after the game in the locker room, Coach Brown announced that Clement, who was a walk-on, is now on scholarship. He got mobbed by his teammates. WVU on the move. Donaldson inside the five. Touchdown saving tackle. Devonshire and McMillan. And a similar play that they ran with success a little earlier. Just a little counter action. You get the two tight ends, Davis and Taylor, out in front. Good job, too, by Markiel carrying out his fake and kind of holding some defenders himself as Donaldson gashes it through for another nice game. And there's an injured Panther. It's Tyler Bentley. Backup defensive tackle. First and goal for the Mountain up on Hawaii. 34 to 3 at the half. Colorado underway with Colorado State in just a few minutes. Top of the hour on ESPN. That could very easily be two 3 and 0 teams and more highly ranked than those current numbers. 12th play of the drive, 11 plays, all runs for 58 yards. First and goal, West Virginia at the pit three. C.J. Donaldson. C.J. Donaldson got within inches of the goal line. Looked like he would not be denied. Brandon George, the initial hit. There's Garrett Green, the starting quarterback for West Virginia. Injured after their sixth offensive play. About six and a half minutes to go in the first quarter. Actually, I want to correctly say so there was one pass on this drive to Clement. 
Here's second and goal, second and inches. Donaldson, the running back, on the left hip of Nico Marchiol, the backup quarterback, who's played solidly. Touchdown, C.J. Donaldson. And here comes a penalty. That's just really dumb. Rips his helmet off. It's a one-yard touchdown run diminished by the really ill-advised penalty after the touchdown. And he, just a great job by the left side. They bring in the backup left tackle, Nick Malone, number 88. He carves it out, and they make a play. Against number four for taking his helmet off. That's just hitting our penalty. Well, for the second year in a row, 100 yards against Pittsburgh. The 17 carries tonight are a career high. The 125 rushing yards last year were a career high. One of his four 100-yard rushing games last season as a true freshman. Well, that is a really bad decision he made. Hayes trying to make it an eight-point game. And I have a pit team, Greg, that is uh, struggling to move the football, and they're going to get a big boost in field position because of the penalty in what is a one-score game. Yeah, and it's an emotional moment. Naturally, you score in a rivalry game, something you think about, dream about your whole life. You have to keep your composure, man. I mean, a 15-yard penalty now assessed on the kickoff. Pitt has had very little going offensively beyond their first drive. Now, like you alluded to, Sean, I mean, that likely great field position to potentially jumpstart the engine. For 10 years, ESPN supported the College Football Playoff Foundation, bringing the college football community together during Extra Yard for Teachers Week to celebrate and honor great teachers. Since its inception, the CFP Foundation has recognized more than a half million educators. For more, follow at CFP Extra Yard. Great program. So the kickoff will come from the 20 from Michael Hayes. Kenny Johnson, the return man, back at his own 14-yard line. No breeze at all in the stadium right now. Johnson from the 13. And down at the 34, here's Molly McGrath. Well, West Virginia linebacker Lee Koba's journey to Morgantown was a winding road with stops at Syracuse and at Junior College. And he told us he was able to find his way because of his guidance counselor, Carrie Tuttle. He said, she supported me, never gave up on me when things get hard or I made mistakes. And I owe my college football career to her. Koba said that Tuttle is like family. They talk almost every day. She attends most of his games, and she's here today. You can see to support him. Just an example of a teacher going above and beyond to make a difference in a student's life, Sean. And so many wonderful educators like her around the country who have helped these young people playing college football. Jerkovic for Gavin Bartholomew up the sideline with a first down for Pitt. Obviously a ton of time left in this game, not at all similar to last week, but Pitt is not really a team that's designed to come from behind from big deficits. Of course, just a one-score game, but they have to get the passing attack going a little bit, and it starts by involving Gavin Bartholomew, who's been very quiet tonight, but might be their most effective pass catcher outside. That was the first pass of the second half for Jerkovic. Deep drop. Wants to fling it down the field, and he threw an interception. Picked off by Beanie Bishop, Jr. And he is still going. All the way to the pit 30. Hard to tell who Jerkovic was throwing that to. It wasn't close. And it's a 40-yard return by Bishop. 
just another terrible decision from Phil Jerkovic. There's nothing there. Look at all these defenders way out in coverage. Back, back, back. You got a guy right over the middle. That's your check down. That's your outlet. Throw it to him. Instead, he forces it downfield. And it's an easy interception for the West Virginia defense. Deanie Bishop with the interception of Jerkovic, who's been really bad for the second week in a row. Bishop has an interception for the second week in a row. He had his first as a Mountaineer last week against Duquesne. The play fake by Markiole. And he is ahead for two. Kyle Lewis made the tackle. Well, this is a problem now, Greg, for Pittsburgh. I mean, he's clearly the number one quarterback. He was brought here to be that. The backup is Christian Bayer, transferred from Penn State. You know, Pat Narduzzi said after the game last week, hey, he's our guy. But can he still be your guy playing like this? You can't make decisions like that. I mean, it's you have a fresh set of downs. Check it down. There's no one on the running back whatsoever. Instead, you try to force one. It turns into a catastrophic mistake. Jalen Anderson. They're in field goal range now. That would be huge for West Virginia to make it a two-score game. Well, there's last week, 31.3% against Cincinnati. And a little bit better than that tonight on four out of ten, but with two interceptions. He hadn't thrown one this season prior to tonight. And those are the killers, too. I mean, especially given the field position that West Virginia has been afforded as a result of the interceptions. Last week, you could kind of pin it on the protection. He got hit a lot. He got pressured a lot. So as a result, he was off target. But tonight, man, the decision making is on him. Third down and five. Markio avoided the rush, dumped it off short, but short of the first down to Cole Taylor. Nate Temple forced the quick throw. And the field goal team comes out absolutely. Nick need to kick the field goal late in the third quarter and make it a two score game. You know, Djokovic, to me, has regressed from 2020 when he was at Boston College. The starter, Frank Signetti, was his offensive coordinator there. You wonder if some of it is the beating he took last year behind a injury devastated offensive line at BC. He was pressured more than any quarterback in the country. Here's a big field goal attempt 42 yards and just inside the right upright for Michael Hayes. His first career field goal attempt as a West Virginia Mountaineer and it is good. Transferred in from Georgia State where he was their kicker last year also punted at Georgia State. Nice little controlled draw right inside that right upright. Looks like your swing out there on the links, Sean. You know you're got that nice little beautiful little draw. baby draw. <laughs> Austin Brinkman, the snapper. Third year as the long snapper. The execution good all the way around. You saw Neil Brown pumping his fist in his fifth year. They're just 23 and 26. He knows it's an important year. Every article you read about coaches on the hot seat coming in this year, his name's on it. He said, we have to win. He said, I'm not going to worry about it. I'm going to coach my team, try to get them to play as well as they can. And if the worst thing that happened is I get fired, I'll deal with it. But you know, he stepped into a very tough situation here. The cupboard was very bare. And he's had to build it back up. I think most people believe they're getting better. The question will be, will there be enough improvement? They're picked to finish at the bottom of the Big 12 this year. They think they're better than that. Hayes' kickoff down to Johnson. Kenny Johnson, nice return to the 32. Here's Kevin Nagandi. Going time now for our chess PNU. Back to you. All right, thank you very much. First and 10, Pittsburgh. Up the middle, Sebo Flemister. Tommy Wadjur Jaye made the tackle. Well, we talk about the cupboard being bare. Neil Brown's in his fifth year. In the previous four years, obviously, with players that he inherited from Dana Holgerson, they've had a total of four players drafted, and one of those transferred in while Neil Brown was here. 
by contrast the previous four they had 13 players drafted nine in the first four rounds. Here's Flemister again. Two of those 13 were first round picks. They didn't have anybody drafted in 2022 for the first time since 2007. The 10 drafts before Neil Brown got here, they averaged three players drafted per year. So he's had to build it up. He came here with a terrific track record, 35 and 16 at Troy, more than 10 wins or more the last three years there. Jakovic, the ball carrier for a first down. But he knows the reality, Greg, as he said, you still have to win. You know, people don't care what you walked into. He's a good coach. I mean, he's an excellent coach. It's just he walked in and there was nothing. There's a reason why Dana Holgerson kind of circled 2019 and said this is the year and then decided to go to Houston after the season when they lost those last two games. So difficult spot for him to be in, but he's really got to win at home. If he can win the games at home, I think he'll be in good shape. Lemister topped by Lee Koba. The leader of that defense in tackles emotionally, physically, the tone setter, and he's doing it again tonight. ESPN's presentation of college football on ABC will return with the fourth quarter after this message and a word from our ABC station. Coach, what kind of toughness do you need to see on both sides of the ball to put this game away? Well, we got to finish. You know, it's been 54 weeks. Um, last year in this game, we're up seven in the fourth and don't finish. So, how much progress have we made? It's going to be a tough. It's a brawl. You know, I've said that multiple times. It's a brawl, and the toughest team's going to win. And we got to we got to bow up here on defense, and then we got to con continue to run the ball on offense. Thank you, coach. Thank you. 43-year-old Kentucky native Neil Brown. Looking for a signature win, trying to change the narrative. He said he feels very well supported by Mountaineer Nation. It's what he believes to be a small vocal minority. Jakovic taken down. Could not get away. And it'll be third down and long. Jared Bartlett there and Mike Lockhart. And Gonzalez, the starting left tackle, is not getting up. Senior captain. Timeout. Aerial coverage provided by Goodyear. Celebrating the challenge of road games everywhere. Are you ready for the road? Goodyear more driven. Matt. Gonzalez, their starting left tackle, walked off under his own power. He's gone to the tent. Ryan Bayer has come in. That left tackle, redshirt freshman. They have some injuries they're dealing with up front. Here's third down at 11. Opening minute of the fourth quarter. Pittsburgh down by six. And a false start before the snap. Before the snap, ball start, offense, number 78, five yard penalty, third down. Branson Taylor, the right tackle. Here's Molly. I'm told that left, left tackle Matt Gonzalez is out for the rest of this game with a foot injury, Sean. All right, that's another big blow. Third down and 16, seven penalties against Pitt. Phil Jakovic checks it down, and they can't even complete that pass. Daniel Carter couldn't catch it. Probably wasn't going to get the first down anyway. But pretty simple throw, you would think, Greg, and catch. Yeah, one where it looked like Jakovic thought that Carter was just kind of stay stationary. Carter drifted away. As a result, the ball was low. That thing needs to get out quicker to Carter to give him a chance to see if he can't turn the corner and pick up the first down. There's Caleb Junko. Wobbly line drive. Landed near the 20. Took a good bounce. Dangerous. 
fielding of the ball by Preston Fox. And as Molly reported, Gonzalez, Gonzalez down for the rest of the night and walking toward the locker room. Here's Kevin. Sean, time now for our All-State Good Hands play of the day. Michigan flea flicker, and J.J. McCarthy gets it back, and he's got Cornelius Johnson. Now watch the juggling catch, the concentration, hold it on. 50 yards in the big house, 31-6 right now. Michigan all over Bowling Green. Back to Sean, Greg, and Molly. The last game without Jim Harbaugh. So 13 minutes to go, West Virginia, the ball. And an 11 point lead with Nico Marchiol, the backup quarterback. First charge timeout. West Virginia. Neil Brown really upset. I don't think they had the right people on the field. So they have to use the timeout. Sean McDonough, Greg McElroy, Neil Brown uh, needing a big win. His team's played pretty well tonight. I'm, I'm still shocked that Pittsburgh hasn't taken more shots down the field against the past defense been one of the worst in the country the last couple of years but it seems like every time they try Phil Jakovic makes a bad decision. Yeah I mean 10 points right now I mean the deficit is 11 10 of them are coming off of really poor decisions from Phil Jakovic you have to wonder I mean did they trust him I mean at some point you got to throw caution to the wind and you got to challenge a group that really has struggled. I mean, putting it lightly, they've been really bad these first couple weeks of the season, giving up big plays, giving up run after catch, being soft in coverage. Been better tonight, but still, it's a group that still has question marks across the board at both safety and corner, and yet they haven't really tried anything through the air. Well, there's the secondary that's had to defend only 11 pass attempts by Jakovic tonight. Out of the pistol with Donaldson, the running back. He did well to get across the line of scrimmage. Brandon George in on another tackle. George, a fifth year senior from Reading, Pennsylvania. And now it's Donaldson hobbled. I wonder if it's a cramp. He's carried 18 times for 102 and a score. ABC Saturday Night Football is presented by Capital One. What's in your wallet? What a night so far for C.J. Donaldson. Working zone to the outside, trying to stretch this defense horizontally, cuts it back up inside, and you see just how powerful he is. Never goes down on initial contact, and they work some of the counter here. Love the way that they block it out up front. Excellent job by the tight ends. A good job, too, by Mark Hill carrying out his fake as Donaldson gashes up inside and pays it off a couple of minutes later for the touchdown. Shaken up a moment ago, entered the tent, did walk off under his own power, so. It's going to be important for him to get back to try to put this game on ice. Jalen Anderson in forms. Donaldson came off. West Virginia has really not had a big play all night. Their longest run is 17. Their longest pass play is 15. They don't have a 20 yard play. Longest play from scrimmage in the game is the 20 yard completion by Pitt in the first half. Jakovic to Bub Means. This has been a grind it out, slug it out, keep the ball on the ground, backyard brawl from the start. Marchio, first down. Down to the 24. They're going to read the end man of the line of scrimmage. He's kind of in no man's land, but ultimately Markiall gets him to commit inside, and then he goes, boom, and he knows exactly how far to get it. Doesn't try to shake and bake head first and picks up a key first down for the Mountaineers. From a football family, his dad, Ken, played in the NFL. He had a brother who played at Texas A&M and was in the Arizona football program. The pistol. Traylon Davis, the motion man, and Jalen Anderson. 
The ball carry taken down by Donovan McMillan. Big 12 now is only on ESPN Plus. Here are the matchups for next week. Texas Tech is here against West Virginia. Sam Houston versus Houston. If you're a Big 12 fan, sign up today at ESPNplus.com slash Big 12 now. Three straight home games for West Virginia. Duquesne last week, Pittsburgh tonight, and Texas Tech here next Saturday. After the play fig, Margio on target and a nice catch by Preston Fox. Red shirt sophomore from right here in Morgantown, another former walk on who's now on scholarship, a 14 yard play. And they've gone with the RPO a couple times, but the RPO has been a slant. That time they get Preston Fox on the out route. Ball's thrown slightly inside, but because of the separation that Fox was able to create on the route, he's still able to reel it in. I mentioned Markiel had a terrific high school career. He was in the ESPN. 300, one of the top recruits in the country. ESPN had him ranked the number 10 pocket passer in his high school class nationally. Jalen Anderson slips down at the line of scrimmage along the near sideline with Van Brimma there for Pittsburgh. He put up some big numbers in high school, did Markiole. Pass for 8,300 and 10 yards, 91 touchdowns in 43 games. Took his Hamilton High team to the state semifinals as a senior. Stepping in for Garrett Green tonight. He's played well before, but of course, the emotions of a rivalry game, it's going to test the young players, and he's handled, I think, himself very, very well under the circumstances. Taking down to 10 minutes to go. Marchio. Looked like he might be dropped for a loss. Instead, he turned it into a gain of three. Another tackle by Donovan McMillan. Donaldson trying to get loose on the sideline. They're looking at his right leg while he was down on the turf. And West Virginia wisely in no hurry here with nine and a half minutes to go and the 11 point lead. I wonder do they trust their young quarterback enough to throw it what would be a normally a passing situation. Send Rodney Gallagher in motion. Speedy true freshman who gets dropped for no game. Well played by Javon McIntyre. Dayon Hayes helped make the play as well. So it's fourth down, and no Neil Brown likes to go for it, but this is one you have to punt, don't you? <laughs> oh, yeah. Your own territory? Absolutely. No doubt about it. Own territory. Young quarterback. Don't want to take any unnecessary rest. With the struggles that Pitts had offensively tonight, I think they feel real comfortable with their defense on the field with Pitt backed up. Devin Shire, the return man, he's dangerous. Had a punt return touchdown last year, 82 yards against Rhode Island. To go with his two interception returns for touchdown. Oh, that's a shank. Don't know if it was deflected at the line of scrimmage, but Pitt's going to have the ball in West Virginia territory. Looked like it was blocked by Christian Stokes. Well, Rasheem Biles, the 31 on the other side. Yeah, he got a piece of it. It wasn't a shank. It was blocked by Biles. They blocked two punts last year. As you can see, number 31, Biles coming off the right-hand side, really trying to give something to this Pitt team that hasn't done much here in the second half. Biles gets a piece of it, and Phil Jerkovic and company have excellent field position. Their best starting field position of the night, the West Virginia 48. They were in dire need of a big play. They got it from the true freshman. Jerkovic pulled it down. Trying to spin away from Beanie Bishop and could not. Taken down at the 43. First big play of his pick career for Biles out of Pickerington, Ohio, in the Columbus area. 
Under eight minutes to go. Just 172 yards of offense for Pittsburgh. West Virginia not much better, 196. Jakovic, four for 11 for 45 yards and two interceptions. Rodney Hammond did not make the first down yardage. Got within two, stopped by Fatorma Moba. Halfway through the fourth quarter. Sharp contrast to last year's backyard brawl, a 38-31 game. First down carry for Hammond with seven lead changes. As Neil Brown said earlier, they had the lead in the fourth quarter and let it get away. This one played very close to the best on both sides. There are 97 plays from scrimmage in this game. 75 of them have been runs. 11 pass attempts by each team. Jerkovic, plenty of time, has the crosser for a short gain. It's above means to the 31 yard line. And they're trying to go a bit more quickly here with six and a half minutes to go, all three of their timeouts. West Virginia playing very soft in coverage, just trying to keep things in front and forcing Jerkovic to be patient and try to methodically make, work his way down the field instead of forcing it the way he has multiple times. They bring pressure. Forced a throw up for grabs, and it is incomplete. Mumfield looked like he got a hand on it, couldn't take it in. Jay Lathan came on a blitz and forced the throw off his back foot while retreating for Jakovic. Just a great timing of the pressure there from Lathan as he delivered the big hit. Mumfield almost brought it in. But fortunate there for Pitt that that thing didn't get tipped up and intercepted. Third and five. Pitt four out of ten. Both teams are four out of ten. Jakovic short set, complete pass, but short of the first down to Malcolm Epps, the tight end. Well, what do you do? You're down two scores. You're in field goal range. They're going to go for it on fourth down and one. It's a long one. Jakovic did not appear to get there. He did not. And West Virginia will take over on downs. Greg, what do you think of the decision to go for it? A field goal makes it a one score game. Fine with going for it, but the execution there from Bill Jerkovic trying to work. The QB sneaked to the left-hand side where there was nobody blocking the West Virginia defender as they stand tall on that fourth and short attempt. I just don't understand what Jerkovic was looking at. There's two West Virginia defenders to the left-hand side outside the left tackle, who, by the way, is a backup because Gonsalves got hurt. They're going to measure, but he's well short. Marcus Floyd, a big part of that stop. And the misery continues for Phil Jerkovic. 5.42 to go. The Mountaineers up by 11. All right, Kevin, thank you here. 5.42 to go. Turnover on downs, and West Virginia has it back from its own 27 with a 17-6 lead, and Jalen Anderson in the pistol behind Nico Marchio. Let's go back to the fourth down play. Yeah, you can see Jerkovic on a quarterback sneak. His backup left tackle is Ryan Bear. Ryan Bear's anticipating his quarterback surging forward. Instead, Jerkovic sees a bubble to the left, tries to work to the left, but unfortunately for Jerkovic, not on the same page with his left tackle. There's an unblocked defender in Trey Lathan right there waiting to stop him, and they're dropped before he can reach the line to gain. Just not on the same page with this offensive line. Ryan Bear, very inexperienced player. Played in only three games last year as a backup and redshirted. He did not play at all last week against Cincinnati. They lose their veteran tackle. 
Gonzalez, who would have been out there had he not walked off with a foot injury. Jalen Anderson, the ball carrier again. We're under five minutes to go. And a third down upcoming. Third down and four for the Mountaineers. It's a got to have it situation, obviously, for Pitt. Absolutely 100% have to get a stop here. West Virginia using all of the time. Pitt has all three timeouts remaining. Huge third down and four. Anderson is the running back. Anderson with a flag down. He didn't get to the first down marker, so this is against West Virginia. Pitt will turn it down and force the punt. And they're looking over to the pit sideline to Pat Narduzzi. He's going to turn it down. That's the right move. Don't think Neil Brown would go for it. Holding offense number 54. Penalty decline. Result of the play is fourth down. The clock will start on the snap. The great center Zach Frazier called for the hold. So important here for West Virginia. Obviously leaky on their punt protection. The last attempt here about the only way based on how Pitt's offense is going. They almost have to get a blocked kick here in a two score game. So got to be more sound in punt protection against what's likely to be an all out punt block. Very athletic block leaping high in the air by Biles on the last one. Straw wasting no time gets that off tumbling punt down to Devonshire awkward catch had to retreat back to the 10 and he gets buried. Forty five yard punt and 11 yards in the wrong direction for Devonshire on the return Malachi Ruffin down there on the coverage and there is a flag down. On Rasheem Biles, the same man who blocked the punt on the last punt. Devonshire trouble on the catch, caught it against his ear. And then he paid the price as he got buried by Ruffin and Bartlett. Lucky to even make the catch, to be honest with you. I mean, securing it against your helmet is pretty remarkable, but my goodness, did he pay the price at the back end of that. As you can see, number 31, Biles, pushing what looked like the long snapper, went flying, and that was the result of the foul. So they're on their own five, down by two scores, under four minutes to go. And with an offense that's done very little, well, that's a big play to... Gavin Bartholomew, that's going to be the longest play of the night from scrimmage for either team. The first one of more than 20 yards. 27 to Bartholomew. Three and a half to go. Daniel Carter out of bounds, no gain. Jared Bartlett there for West Virginia. Big question here for Jordan Leslie. They really used a lot of soft coverage the first couple games of the year with very, very few good results. But I think you have to employ that very soft coverage. Got to keep the ball in front of you. No big plays if you're West Virginia defensively. Jakovic. Flag down. Day Day Reynolds down shy of the 40. It's coming back for a holding call against Pitt. Holding, holding, offense, number 70. Number 70, second down. 
It's a difficult spot for the big redshirt freshman Ryan Bear. I mean, he's got to really hold on to this block forever, working against Bartlett, who's that bandit pass rusher off the edge. And as Jerkovic tried to drift to his left, Ryan Bear did not disengage, and as a result, drew the penalty. Second and 20, the Panthers back at their own 22 with time running out, 2.40 to go. Jakovic throws it over the head of his receiver, Means, and hooked it up near the 40-yard line, and Jakovic thought he was going to continue along the sideline. Kovic, 8 out of 17 for 81 yards and two interceptions. Pitts actually outgained WVU 215 to 203. Another near interception off the hands of Trey Lathan. Well, what do you do? You have to go for it, don't you think? Two and a half minutes to go. You need to score twice. Absolutely, you have to. And Dracovic has to understand. Great play there by Lathan. Dracovic has to understand the ball has to travel the distance here, so you need to have vertical routes and you have to understand exactly how far you have to go to pick up the line to gain. See the wobbly ball, that's nothing new. Even uh, Frank Signetti, who's a great admirer of Dracovic, said he is not a great spinner of the football. He doesn't really throw a tight spiral, but usually he's accurate. Not these last couple of weeks. They have to have it and they won't get it. Down he goes. Back inside the 15 in the arms of Tyron Bradley. Just an excellent rush. High on the left side. And then you go up and under on the right side. Look at Bradley set up the right tackle. Branson Taylor slips inside and drops Jerkovic as he's stepping up because he feels that backside pressure. Just a perfectly executed pass rush from West Virginia up front defensively. Ben does have all three timeouts. Mark Eel went under center, gave it to Anderson, and he spun down at the seven-yard line by Donovan McMillan. McMillan made his first start as a Panther tonight. He's a transfer from Florida. They were pleased with the way he had played in the first couple of games. From the Pittsburgh area originally, no timeout yet from Narduzzi, and we go under two minutes. This pit defense has battled tonight, man, giving up just 209 total yards, only 60 through the air, but and their offense has really let them down and given them some difficult spots. Anderson again could not break the tackle. There's another flag down. Good tackle again by McMillan. And fisticuffs. A staple of this rivalry. There's a reason why they call it the backyard brawl. Holding offense number 74. 10-yard penalty. Clock is start on the snap. Wyatt Milam. As you can see the big left tackle there, number 74, grabbing the jersey of Shane Simon as he tried to sneak in through there. And as you can see, no love lost between Pitt 
And no and flags for that, apparently. Yeah, let them play. It's the chip. backyard brawl, yeah. so they're brawling. There you go. Not sure that constituted a brawl, but no, nothing egregious. First charge timeout. Pittsburgh. 30 seconds. Here are the college football rankings entering today's action. Brought to you by Allstate. Georgia had a tussle from South Carolina, but prevailed. How about Florida State? Boston College had 18 penalties and still only lost by two. It was about a 25-point underdog. Wild game up there in Chestnut Hill. I mean, Florida State, obviously Clemson game looming, potentially a little look ahead. You wonder they, if they'll drop, though, after that unimpressive performance when we look at the All-State rankings next week. Game day will be at Notre Dame for the top 10 battle between Ohio State and the Fighting Irish. Notre Dame very impressive so far this year. As usual, Saturday 8, excuse me, 9 a.m. Eastern from South Bend. Second and 14, 137 to go, two timeouts for Pittsburgh. And Jalen Anderson remains the running back. At this point, just want to hang on to the ball, stay in bounds. He got dragged down at the 15 yard line. Let's check in with Kevin Nagandi. Showing time now for our. A little extra juice in that one after the back and forth this week between the coaches. 129 to go. And a 17 to 6 West Virginia lead. They are loving this. They're heated rivals from up the road, 75 miles up I-79. It's the most played rivalry for each school. Great fans here, and they've been waiting for a big win. They're gonna get one tonight, barring a disaster. They deserve it, man. I mean. Really played pretty well in week one against Penn State. Obviously, we've now found that Penn State's the real deal and battled for a while, just couldn't quite make the plays in the second half to close the gap. Last week looked really good offensively, and then tonight in a very different way, just excellent the way they've controlled the line of scrimmage against a proud Pitt program. Play fake by Markiel. Ducks away from a hit. Picks up a block and slides down. Short of the first down. Deion Hayes put the pressure on. Third and final timeout. Pittsburgh, 30 seconds. So it's fourth down and 12, and Neil Brown has a decision to make. You kick a field goal. Next week, we'll bring you that top 20 matchup in the Pac-12, ABC 3.30 Eastern Time, Colorado and Oregon. Colorado 2-0, so much talk about Deion Sanders, but his son is a remarkable quarterback, and Travis Hunter is literally playing like every snap of every game. <laughs> on each side of the ball. Yeah, I think when he's out, I mean, the seven snaps it feels like he's missed this year. The other team's doing cartwheels, man, because he can impact the game on both sides. We'll try to want to risk a block. Anderson. Inside the 10, and they'll turn it over on downs. So Pitt with no timeouts, down by 11, has a minute and 12 to go. And we can tell you that Colorado State has just scored again to take the lead in the Battle of Colorado. 13 to 7 with the extra point upcoming. Be quite the stunner here in Boulder after what's been such a celebrated day with game day on hand and Coach Corso's 400th headgear selection putting on that Buffalo headdress and be quite the shocker with all the buildup that that game has had. So they start from the nine.
Jerkovic. Again, completely off target. Not on the same page with Mumfield. You know, Greg, I don't want to pile on, but you know, there's a lot that I think if you're a Pitt fan that's troublesome, including the body language. Yeah. There just doesn't seem to be a lot of juice. You know, Pat Narduzzi said they came out flat last week and they practiced very hard this week. They picked up the tempo a lot, but this Phil Jakovic not playing well and you know, the body language to me, yeah, is negative. Uh, it, it certainly feels that way. I mean, he's clearly searching for something, but there's got to be more urgency in his game. Running for his life again. You just wonder if he's a little shell shocked by what happened. There's the back of Christian Bayer, the transfer from Penn State. He, he played behind an offensive line at BC last year that was decimated by injuries. He was the most pressured quarterback in the country. And uh, even tonight, a lot of times it looks like he has time. Happy feet. Happy feet and not on the same page with his wide receivers. And really, I think Frank Signetti, too, probably needs to look in the mirror. you got to make sure, even though you're committed to running the football in this game naturally, you got to make sure your quarterback's comfortable. And just never really felt like they were able to do that tonight. And it's really not. You know, adjusting to a new system because they're playing the same system that they played at Boston College. Almost another interception, and it is picked off on the ricochet. Malachi Ruffin. Marcus Floyd, who made a big play on the fourth down stop of Jakovic on the failed sneak, got a hand on it. He's playing for the first time this season, and the coaches felt the secondary would be better because he's in there. And then Ruffin, the interception, who started at corner for the first time this year. Man, and how about the concentration there by Ruffin? Obviously, terrific play by Marcus Floyd, but Ruffin having to work through Dejon Reynolds, somehow reeling in that interception right on his sideline as everybody losing their mind here in Morgantown, West Virginia. What a performance from a defense that has had their fair share of struggles these last couple weeks. Last couple of years. Now they're in victory formation. The interception for Ruffin, the third of his career at two last year. He's a fifth year senior from Nashville, North Carolina. And nothing Pitt can do now. Jakovic, 8 out of 20 after he completed 31% a week ago against Cincinnati. And just shaking his head. And West Virginia, after it got away in heartbreaking fashion in the fourth quarter last year at Pittsburgh, is going to win the 106th backyard brawl. A huge win for Neil Brown. Trying to get off the hot seat. This will help. Still more to do. And well done by Nico Marchiolo. Has the game ball in his hands. Off the bench in the first quarter. Not a lot of college experience. But he led them the victory. Here's Molly McGrath. Coach, last year you had a lead in the fourth quarter in this game and you let it slip away. Why was this year different? We're a tougher football team, and that's not a knock on last year's bunch. We're just further along in the process, and what a night, you know. Quarterback gets hurt for second series, and we just found a way. And our defense, which means much aligned for the last year and a half or so, really stood up. We got takeaways. And we were able to run the football, and we we're really good up front, and we showed it tonight. You mentioned Garrett Green's injury. How did your offense respond with toughness, especially in the run game? Well, they knew what it was going to be once he went down. And credit Nico, he managed the game really well, made some key uh, throws when he needed to. It's hard for a backup because you don't get the reps that the starter gets. But he came in and did a really good job in a tough environment. You know, he's got two wins that he played most of the game, one on the road against Oklahoma State in a tough rain game. And then tonight, in the biggest rivalry for our football team and our program, so much credit to him. He's a tough kid, and good win. This is the best tradition, Molly, in college football right here. It's electric tonight, and Country Road's no better ending. You told us it's been 54 weeks since last year's loss. 
how does this win propel this program forward? Well, we're going to take a step. We got a huge challenge next week. Texas Tech's had our number. More importantly, it's been since November 25th of 2011 since our fan base in this state experienced the win on the football field versus Pitt. And we're going to enjoy this one tonight. They've already started enjoying it. All right, go enjoy it, Coach. Congrats. Well, you have to be happy for him. Garrett Green injured early in the first quarter, and Markiol was solid. They only asked Markiol to throw three passes in the second half. Big hug for Green and Markiol as the game ended. Markiol went six for nine for 60 yards passing and a touchdown. <laughs> And he will long be remembered now in the history of this backyard brawl. As Neil Brown said they haven't had a home game in this rivalry since 2011. They waited a long time. They know how to celebrate, and it'll go on for a long time. For Greg McElroy, Molly McGrath, our great crew, led by Phil Dean and Scott Johnson. Sean McDonough, good night from Morgantown. Next is your local news over most of these ABC stations.